Today, I'm going to be traveling 30 hours and 12,000 miles from Durban, South Africa to Chicago in the USA. I have been awake for over 24 hours at this point. That would have been tragic. This is my heaven. They don't take any chances with America, eh? We get the special treatment with the triple checks everywhere. 48 hours before the flight, check-in opens, and I grab my favorite seat at the back of the plane in the twin-seater. Mateo and I usually sit together, but this time I'm flying solo. I've made this journey by myself once before a few years ago, so even though it's a long one and I'm sad Mateo won't be with me, I know it'll be fine. But don't worry, I made a plan. Cheers! In my last video, I showed you what I pack and how I prepare for a 30-hour trip. So I always take this with me. Just get this, it's peace of mind. But today, it's time to fly. Subscribe to follow the adventure. Most important start to the day is taking a shower, so you feel as fresh as possible for the journey. I should know myself better at this point. Uh, almost comical that I thought I could get away with only checking one bag and not two. The duffel is coming out. These souvenirs are pushing me over the weight. I'm already at weight for my carry-on and the first bag. So young and naive yesterday. Finally, all packed up and ready to go. I had to use the duffel. I mean, it literally weighs nothing, but there was just a little bit too much overflow. So I think it's only like five kgs, but it had to be done. The stuff's all packed up, but I just want to show you, this is what I wear on a flight. Like literally $10 H&M leggings with, I'm pretty sure an H&M tank top. Um, but it's a little bit too ninja looking, so I like to put a little bit of a loose shirt on top. And I'm wearing my white Steve Madden sneakers. Then as a jacket, because it kind of gets cold on planes sometimes, I take my lightweight like Adidas jacket, which I find perfect for the plane. And a little scrunchy Apple watch, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Bye, buddy. Bye. Hi, doggies. It's time to go. Bye, honey bunny. Bye, honey. Oh, we'll go to clean the car. Look at that. First class detailing service before our ride. We even got the mommy-in-law on it. <laughs> the car was at the beach this weekend. It is a very hot and sunny day today. It is the middle of summer. I'm not gonna lie, this also happens last minute where I'm getting in the car with like things I forgot, like my toothbrush, my little body spray, and my razor. So yeah, it doesn't matter how many times I do this, uh, it's always a hot mess in the last hour before we leave to the airport. I'm trying to open. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Baby. Excuse me, garçon. I can't open the door. <laughs> My toothbrush isn't strong enough. Okay. Mommy in law coming to the airport. Okay, we need to stick this somewhere. Restauration. Mugging Bean is one of my favorite spots to eat in South Africa because their menu is always so stacked and delicious. Hello, Greg. Oh, that looks so good. Greg! 
<laughs> You're here. I'm on a video. Yeah. We got a special visitor. This is Greg and Teo's best friend. He came to say bye. <laughs> You're so sweet. Very happy. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> he came to say bye out of his own free will. <laughs> I got a giant bowl of coffee. Perfect. I'm about to be wide awake on this flight. This cup's the size of my head. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, nice. Got a buttermilk burger. Don't drink ketchup, you got ketchup. So we just finished eating. Check-in opened about 10 minutes ago. So now we're off to chicken. How are you feeling? Are you gonna miss me? Always. Let's see, Dubai, we're on time. It's actually pretty quiet today, which is good. This is kind of a small airport, so it's not too hard to navigate. Check-in is done, now <laughs> it's time to go through security with my entourage here. <laughs> I'm gonna miss you. I'm gonna miss you more. Hashtag emotional. Yeah. Okay, bye, I love you. Love you, bye. Have fun. Oh yeah, no, that's my Where husband. Is Where is he? He stays here. I live in America. Just leave him. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. Have a good day. I love the people in this country. The customs guy was, or the immigration officer was hilarious. People in South Africa are just the friendliest. And now we're in. Although my bags are like full to the brim with souvenirs for everyone, I still want to see if I can find anything else. So I'm coming to the Big Five Duty Free to see if there's any cute things I can pick up. How cute is this? Oh, I love that. Oh, what a little lion. They're so soft. Ooh, I actually got my sister Rita a pair of these from a market a few years ago. They had elephants on them. These wood carvings are so nice. It's a pretty legit gift shop. That's pretty cool. I actually grabbed a few of these for my sisters. There's so much Nando sauce. And pate, ostrich liver pate, zebra pate, crocodile pate. Ooh, that is wild. Springbok pate. National animal. Kudu pate. That is the first time I've seen that. Ooh, look at those carvings. I have a bunch of these beautiful beaded jewelry. So pretty. There is a lot of really cute stuff in this duty free, but unfortunately I am at capacity with my carry on luggage. Like I can't even shut my backpack. So unfortunately I can't get anything. But luckily I did buy enough souvenirs for everyone. So I think we're good. Um, A20. So one thing I do love about this airport is that like that was the whole section. It's one duty-free and two little restaurants with a couple spots to sit if you're not gonna eat at the restaurant, but it's really manageable. It's probably one of my favorite airports to use just because security is always super quick, immigration's always fast, and like you don't really need to walk that much. Not to mention you got gorgeous views of the hills. It's also very quiet. It's honestly kind of bizarre traveling without Mateo. I think that's why this trip feels a little bit more frazzled for me, like when I was packing. Because, you know, we, I don't know, we just always are doing it together. And it's been a long time since I've done a long haul flight like this by myself. So just getting back into the swing of things, um, me, myself and I, honestly, I'm excited. I got my seats that I wanted at the back of the plane in the twin seaters. I'm dressed in my usual outfit, black on black on black, because if you spill on yourself, you can't tell. 
I wish I was joking, but that's really why. I mean, especially if there's turbulence and you're eating or you're drinking red wine, you know, then no one will know. This place always feels so empty. It's kind of nice. A 20s in the back there. Okay, so I got to my gate kind of early because I just wanted to arrange or like rearrange a few things here between my backpack and my carry-on uh, just to lighten it a bit. It just always becomes such a hot mess in my bag. I have to always rearrange it when I'm at the gate. And what, what, what is this? What the heck? What is this? I didn't put this in here. <gasps> OMG! Could it be? I guess he's coming with us. So I guess I won't be traveling alone after all because Mateo will in fact be coming with us. <laughs> Did somebody call Mr. Sexy? <laughs> so now I have my travel companion back and uh, we're good to go. Okay, baby, I'm just gonna put you right here while I rearrange my bag. Do you need a water? Are you good? Okay, great. Okay. Mateo and I always like to make sure we have water with us when we get on the plane, so I think we should go get some, right? Yeah, me too. Okay, let's go. I need to go see if there's a water refill station anywhere. I know he doesn't speak much. <laughs> People are already loving the fact that Mateo and I are traveling together. Would you look at that? Okay, I need to see if there's any water anywhere. I forgot this airport doesn't have a water refill station, so now I'm just back at the duty free to buy a bottle for the flight. Just gonna get one from the back. They're always nice and cold in the back. Here we go. So boarding starts in 20 minutes and I'm just gonna run to the bathroom really quick. I bought a water bottle and just refilled my insulated bottle with it. I'm just gonna go to the bathroom one last time, wipe my face because I'm sweating like crazy, and then we should be boarding. Time to board. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. And we're boarding. but I brought my own so I don't need to use those. I got settled in for the flight and checked out what movies were available. Emirates never has a shortage of options, especially with new releases. So after flicking through, I decided on watching Ticket to Paradise. The flight from Durban to Dubai is over 4,200 miles and takes about eight hours. Welcome aboard. We're about to show you the safety features of this Emirates flight. An hour and a half after takeoff, we were served dinner, and I chose the chicken curry. It came with a coleslaw salad, a slice of carrot cake, a bread roll, butter, cheese, crackers, a shortbread cookie, water, and a little chocolate. The food on Emirates is always so good, it literally never disappoints, which is another reason I love flying on this airline. I finished my dinner in the movie with six hours still left in the flight. And that's around the time they dimmed the lights and the ceiling was made to look like a sky full of stars. I decided to get some sleep, so I popped in my foamy earplugs and pulled out my eye mask. 
Don't worry, I got Mateo covered too. I was having a hard time falling asleep, so I asked for a glass of red wine, which usually helps in this case. But even after that, and with four hours left in the flight, I still couldn't sleep. With an hour and 40 minutes left to go, and when most of the plane was asleep because it was 1.20 a.m. South Africa time, they handed out a hot snack roll and came around with the drink cart again. I don't know why I took the hot snack roll, I wasn't even hungry. But I guess a part of me just panics on flights when it comes to food. Sometimes I worry that I'm not hungry now, but I will be later, so I take it just in case. Ten minutes later, we got a packet of crackers. Again, don't know why I took it, but I guess this is why I always end up getting to my destination with a bunch of unopened snacks. Then we started our descent into Dubai. just after 5 a.m. Dubai time. Nice first class suites. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Eight hours later. Finally made it. It's like 3.30 in the morning for me right now. And I have to go through another security check before I go to the other set of gates. <laughs> security bin. <laughs> that would have been tragic. So I need that one. I love that it's five in the morning right now and all this <coughs> all the shops are open. Chanel, Bulgari, like literally every designer shop in most airports this early in the morning they'd be closed from what I remember, but everything here is wide open. So pretty impressive. It's a massive airport and it's beautiful, honestly. It's one of the prettiest airports I've been in. Okay, my flight's not on the board yet. It's only going up to 9.10 and I'm at 9.45. so much okay successfully made it into the marhaba lounge and now i'm just gonna pop into the bathroom real quick and wash up before i eat one of the first things i do is make use of this little pack You'll feel a lot better if you brush your teeth. <laughs> Next, you're going to want to get some face wash. Uh, you'll feel a lot better if you wash your face and brush your teeth. And the only makeup I wear when I fly is my CoverGirl mascara and this Benefit like concealer for under my eyes and that just makes me feel a little bit more put together, but that's it. I'm not hungry yet because I ate a lot on the plane and I ate all the snacks, so 
yeah, my body's not ready to eat yet. Maybe I'll have a coffee in a little bit, but I have like four hours until my flight. I still need to figure out what gate it's at. I don't even know, this airport's massive, so I'm hoping I don't have to walk a really long way to get to the gate, but we will see. I'm very out of it right now. I couldn't sleep at all on the first flight. <laughs> Normally I sleep for at least two hours on the first flight, but not a wink this time. Probably has something to do with the giant bowl of coffee I had before I got on the flight. So yeah. I'm just gonna sit here and chill for a while. A few years ago, I was lucky enough to have a 12 hour layover on a Saturday night in the summer. So I met up with a close family friend who took me around Dubai. And I got to see the water show at the Burj Khalifa and enjoy a nice dinner before he dropped me back off at the airport. Unfortunately on this trip, time doesn't permit because my layover is only four hours. Got a little assortment of three hash browns and a chocolate croissant. I'm not too hungry, but I just want to put something in my stomach before we fly. Just left the lounge and I have to find my gate. Just checked the board. I'm at B27, which is only a five minute walk. I love when the boards tell you how far away the walk is to your gate from where you're standing. It's very convenient. So it'll be opening up in a bit. I just like to get there early because yeah, with these big airports, it's a little bit overwhelming if you're end up being if you end up being super far away from your gate by the time they list it so I kind of do the nerdy thing and uh, leave the lounge a little bit earlier just to give myself peace of mind that I do have time and I don't have to sprint to get to my gate oh yes that is paradise and there's a Nutella cafe this is my heaven look at all this merch oh my god oh that is so cute I should get Mateo and I matching shirts this is amazing. At the Nutella Cafe, you can literally customize, like put your own name on the jar. How cute is all of this stuff? I wish I had space in my bag to take this stuff. It's so cute. Oh, it's like I'm back in America already. Look at that. Definitely one of the prettiest airports in the world, I think. Yeah. Just everything is so aesthetically pleasing. I mean, look at this thing. There's a giant McDonald's, you got a Hard Rock. I mean, this place is just, this place is insane. I want my house to look like this. That's amazing. B27, that's us. So the gate is actually open 10 minutes before it said it would be, but I'm pretty sure it's because when we check in here and go downstairs, we're gonna have to go through security again. So if I'm not mistaken, I'll be surprised if we don't have to go through security one more time before we actually board the plane at this specific gate. Hello, how are you? Good, thank you. Yep, thinking it. So for this gate, we always have to, we start at the top and then you take this escalator down and it does look like I was right. There's another security check. They don't take any chances with America, hey? We get the special treatment with the triple checks everywhere. I just filled this up in the lounge and now they're making us dump our water even though we got it in the airport. So I'm gonna have to chug this thing. Okay, word of advice. If you are flying to America from overseas, get to your gate early. I showed up 10 minutes early just because, and yeah, the security line was longer than the actual scanning of the boarding passes. They have like these fold out tables and people in rows. Um, there's maybe like four rows and you have to put, you have to open up your bag, like whatever you have on you, you open it up. They swab cell phones, laptops. They make you open everything. And then they kind of use the wand on your actual person and even though everyone in this airport bought the water past security obviously because they couldn't get into this part of the airport with the water you have to toss it like i filled up my bottle in the lounge and i had to chug it people who like spent i don't know water in the airport's expensive so just beware 
even though you're just coming down to your gate, you're gonna be going through this whole spiel and it's actually packed with people. So give yourself extra time and don't be surprised if you run into an extra security check at the gate. And the security guy definitely laughed when I opened up my backpack and Mateo's head literally just like popped out when I opened it. And I was like, oh, sorry, that's my husband. He's just coming with me. He started laughing. Oh, goodness. been awake for over 24 hours at this point so <laughs> I'm failing I feel like I look terrible uh, my head is pounding uh, yeah and I've been trying to drink water so yeah this is definitely a very grueling journey uh, as many times as I've just been traveling around the world it still takes it out of you so just yeah make sure you're prepared bring your water I'm about to take some Advil for my headache being awake for more than 24 hours is not great. I did not sleep at all on the first flight. So I'm really hoping this, I mean, this flight's over 15 hours. So I just want to pass out and sleep. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. thanks. So you will go across? Thank you so much. love choosing the back of the plane because there's only two seats back there so we'll see if that happens this time when you get to your chair you got the pillow headphones and a blankie backs of these comes with all sorts of ports phone's about to die that's upside down there we go I never break out my blanket this early, but it is very cold on this flight right now for some reason, and we're still on the ground, so it's not even like it's like 10 a.m. right now. Like, I don't think I'm gonna be able to keep my eyes open until it's wheels up. As we were taxiing down the runway, someone on board asked to get off due to a medical emergency. So we taxied back to the gate, which delayed us about an hour or two. Not that I was really paying attention, because I was basically passed out at this point. Which is why I woke up about an hour later and was confused as to why we were still on the ground. But we eventually took off. The flight from Dubai to Chicago is over 7,800 miles and takes about 15 hours. About an hour and a half into the flight, we got breakfast. I chose the crepes and a berry compote, and it was probably the best breakfast I've ever been served on an airplane. It came with some cut up fresh fruit and feta cheese, a croissant, a Nature Valley granola bar, some gourmet crackers, and a little baby pita bread to eat with the hummus. I passed out again. And just woke up now with eight hours left in the flight, and they're about to serve another meal. Any drinks? chicken and rice, which also came with two servings of a chickpea salad, some cheese, crackers, a bread roll, butter, and a delicious piece of cake, salt and pepper, and oh yeah, we also got real cutlery. After sifting through the movies again, I tried to watch Fantastic Beasts and where to find them for like 
the tenth time. But I still ended up stopping it because I can just never get into it. Which is really weird seeing as I've been obsessed with the Harry Potter series since I was like eight. Oh, and what's this? Not me watching Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire for the hundredth time. Oops. Now I'm picking up my bags and then I'm going to jump in an Uber. Sweet free Looks like a lot easier. We made it. Okay, so if you arrive in the International Terminal in O'Hare, it's Terminal 5, then you got to come to this little tram to get you to Terminal 2 if you want to take an Uber or ride share. Okay, no carts allowed, so I'm gonna have to... Next stop, turn the three. I did not think that getting to the door to get an Uber was going to be the hardest part of this trip. Just be warned, you're already so tired of getting off the international flight and you land in the international terminal, you have to come to terminal 2 at door 2D to get the Uber. It just took like an extra 40 minutes. It's just a lot of walking, so be prepared with all your bags, it's kind of tricky. Thank you. I can't believe it's snowing right now. <laughs> I'm not dressed for this. I'm just this little one. Thank you so much. It's snowing and I'm wearing an Adidas jacket. This is terrible. <laughs> in my next episode, I'm taking you around one of my favorite cities in the world, Chicago, where I celebrate the always festive St. Patrick's Day with some of my best friends, eat way too much deep dish pizza, that's a cheese pull, walk down Michigan Avenue and go to the world's largest Starbucks where I hit their bar and try the espresso martini flight. This one has a kick to it. 
before grabbing a drink 96 stories above the city in the Signature Lounge. Subscribe to follow the adventure.